Do you feel your guitar playing's unfocused? Do you want to play your solos with more confidence and on point? Believe me, I was there. What I'll show you today made a big difference in my play. I know, I was there. I had some decent chops. I knew my pentatonic scales all across the neck. Heck, I even knew the major scale and its modes all across the neck, but I hadn't put things together properly. It became obvious to me when I auditioned for a particular band. I played through the songs with them, the standard changes, and I improvised the solos. But when it came down to it, they said, thanks, but no thanks. Why? No, it wasn't because I didn't have a nice guitar. In fact, I had this really nice 335 at the time. It was, they said, because my solos weren't biting enough. Truth is, I was technically proficient, but my play was just really aimless. It lacked confidence, and most of all, it lacked intent. So how do you get that intent? Well, there are lots of different ways, but I believe this is the easiest way to make immediate improvement, because unless you're an absolute beginner, you don't need to learn new scales or arpeggios, and there's no new theory you need to learn. So this is the idea. It's a really simple one. In order to have intent, you have to know where you're going. Makes sense, right? For example, suppose I want to go to the grocery store. I could take the bus. That might involve certain roads. I could drive. That might be different roads. Heck, I could even take a walk. Maybe I have a shortcut through the woods that I could take. It doesn't matter as long as I end up at the same destination. So what does this mean musically? Actually, it means exactly the same thing. I need to know where I want to end up, the note that I want to land on. And what note is that? It's any note in the chord that the rest of the band is playing. Now, I'm going to do an example straight away, but I want to point out something that may be obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. You have to know the chord that you're playing over in order to play the notes in the chord. Okay, it's obvious, I know, but I'm guilty of it, and I know a lot of players that are guilty of just saying, hey, what's the scale, and then just turning off our brains and not thinking at all and just playing. That's where you get aimless play. So I'm going to keep the example simple and play a slow blues in A, but it works in any genre. First I'm going to play it, and then I'll break it down afterward. <laughs> Let's have a look in detail now. You probably noticed I played some wrong theoretical notes there, and that's just to show that it doesn't really matter that much as long as I know where I'm going to end up. That should give you some confidence. All right, this is a blues in A, so we're going to start out on an A7 chord, go to D7 and E7 at the end. Let's start out on A7, let's see what I did. First line. <laughs> I ended up on the D string 7th fret, which is an A. So over the A7 chord, I ended my line on an A. Let's see what happens now. This is a quick change blues. It goes quickly and briefly to D7. Okay, there, what did I do? I played the G string 7th fret, which is a D. Okay, now I might have played some fancy double stop with a bend in there, but what did I do? I bent it and let it come back to the D. Now it goes back to the A7 chord and let's see what I did. Going to the root and now something interesting. Okay, so there's a lot of notes in that and you probably noticed there's a lot of chromatic notes. I didn't really follow a scale. 
You won't find those in the minor pentatonic, but where did I end? I ended up on the G, on the D string fifth fret, and that's part of the A7 chord. It's the flatted seventh, in fact. So, as long as you know where you're going, you can play notes that don't fit in a particular scale or whatever. Let's listen a bit to what I do on a D chord. So all those notes are outlining a D7 chord, and I'm just playing an idea of coming from three frets away and walking up to it chromatically. Let's listen to the rest of it, and I'll just kind of narrate. Now I'm back on the A, flat at seven. Now my E, watch what happens. That's the root. That's the flat seventh of the D. That's the A, I played the root again. Turn around on the E. Okay, I'm sure you get the gist. The rest is work and practice. But believe me, the more that you do this, the better that you get at it and the easier it gets. And click the link on this video because in it, I show you a framework that makes this even better and easier to apply. So click on this link, check it out, and I'll see you on down the road.